In the next few lectures, we are going to give you an overview of engineering ethics in the context of the fact that as an engineer, you will be responsible for for a lot of important things, all the way from constructing structures that are used by this, by society for useful tasks such as uh, making a bridge or a building, uh, to thinking about uh, any device that you make that will involve um, a human safety associated with it as well as environmental factors okay so so let, let me begin by giving you uh, you know a few examples of questions that arise uh, for an engineer to the course of their career right so let's say you are uh, employed by a company this is the first example I'm going to talk about um, so you're uh, employed by a company and this company is going to be designing a bridge that is going to cost uh, about a billion dollars right? and you along with your team uh, conduct a study to determine you know um, what you can achieve with this cost budget and you find that the ideal bridge that uh, you would want to bring, bring, uh, build was actually cost uh, half a billion more so it would be 1.5 billion dollars and in the constraints you're given that is a uh, cost of 1 billion you find that <clears throat> this bridge that you build um, because of the constraints and cost will actually not be able to survive a moderate earthquake on the other hand you see that you know if you increase the cost to 1.25 billion rather than 1 billion this bridge can survive a moderate earthquake but an extreme earthquake will cause it to collapse okay so you are you and your team are in this situation now where you have these different options so then you go back to your employer and give him or her the various options and uh, the employer says you know um, we have to build this bridge for a billion dollars because if we don't then you know we're going to lay off a lot of people in the company including you and he says go ahead and get started with the next stage of the process uh, uh, of the project right so the question is for you as an engineer what do you do right? so here's one example of what can happen as an example two uh, let's look at this scenario here okay. you are you know um, in a government organization and they have asked you to uh, verify that there is a nuclear reactor um, uh, and you want to make sure that it does not leak any toxic material into the neighboring uh, uh, surrounding in, um, uh, environment maybe there's an ocean nearby right? and you do a study of this nuclear reactor and you find that you know in the next eight years there is uh, a good chance of there being a leak right but of course there's uncertainty it may not leak but it might leak and um, then you also find that unless the reactor is actually uh, or reactor operation is stopped for some time you can't actually calculate with greater uh, probability uh, or likelihood what um, what the consequences are right so you just need more information <clears throat> and then you find that if the leak does occur it's both the ocean and the neighboring uh, community that will be at risk okay. and then you know you send your report back up uh, to the government agency and um, they get back to you and say you know what you need to modify your report so that you say that the nuclear facility is actually safe and and they say that um, basically the reason that you want to alter your report is that it will protect the public uh, prevent panic and in that time frame that they have uh, the government will try and fix uh, the issues okay. so again the question is what should you do here's the third example okay. so let's say engineer A is is a recognized engineer in the home country he is in whether he's from okay. he's also a member of the National Society of Professional Engineers NSPE and he's an international member so he is uh, in his home country um, he's able to provide consulting engineering and construction contracting services to foreign national and uh, foreign 
national and local governments okay under the law of the engineers uh, engineer at uh, in the, in the home country it is not illegal for individuals and companies to provide cash payments or in kind property to public officials in foreign countries in uh, so that they can obtain and retain the business from these uh, from these um, uh, public officials right so so we come to this question here and that is would it be ethical for engineer a to provide cash payments or in kind property to public officials in foreign countries in order to get their business looks suspiciously like a like a bribe right well uh, so think about this so you see that these are three examples we've gone through three different scenarios each one you know leading to an important question as to whether uh, what is uh, asked of you is right or wrong whether you should be doing it or not right? now i'll give you an example of uh, uh, something that happened that has direct bearing to our understanding of uh, various aspects of mechanical engineering or uh, uh, construction engineering and it goes back to some um, underlying foundations of, of uh, engineering so this is um, uh, something that happened at a Hyatt Regency hotel uh, in 1981 okay so um, I'm not going to play the video here but I would like you to go and check out this video the YouTube link is provided here it's called uh, ABC News 2020 moment of crisis okay so what happened here um, hopefully you've seen the video and then we can uh, continue on here what happened as you know from the video is that in uh, July uh, of 1981 um, the new hotel uh, the Hyatt Regency in Kansas City Missouri um, um, basically you know there was a serious uh, disaster there where a walkway a hanging walkway so you can see in this image here there's one walkway here and there's a second floor walkway here and there's a fourth floor walkway here and you can see that this walkway and this walkway are connected together by some kind of um, some kind of um, cable system right so it goes up to here and there's a gap and then it goes again so it turns out that there was a dance going on in the hotel lobby uh, down here and at some point during that dance you know this uh, these uh, walkways collapsed and it was a very deadly collapse it killed more than 100 people and so it turns out that it is still one of the deadliest non-deliberate structural failures in American history and next to the World, Tra World Trade Center uh, disaster in uh, 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 on uh, uh, in uh, 1991 oh, sorry um, in 2001 this was uh, this was uh, you know this was the deadliest one okay so what happened was that the National uh, Bureau of Standards was involved in investigation of uh, this disaster and they you know went about collecting data they talked to all the people who worked on constructing the building they interviewed people who were working inside the building they looked through all the rubble and um, and it turns out that they started focusing their attention in this part of the structure here you know this part right here okay so there's a box beam hanger connection now what is that so here is here is your walkway section right going across here like this 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 part here yeah. so that's your walkway section and that is being supported by this cable system so what i highlighted earlier so you have cable go up here and there is a box beam and then on the cable uh, uh, that is you know hanging it up or uh, holding it up and so you have these periodic uh, box beams and uh, the cables that are holding it up as well as cables from the lower lobby that are you know being attached to it so here's what it looks like <coughs> and here's the real life image of it okay so when they looked into the accident they found that you know they had striking evidence that whatever happened originated from this area where the cable was attached to the box beam okay. and and then they went and looked at the design that was originally approved and the design that was actually implemented so this is what the original 
structural engineers had designed for the building and this is what was actually uh, ultimately used to construct the, the walkway. Now without going into details it turned out that this design here actually substantially increases the load on the fourth floor walkway because now it has these two joints here at each end as compared to this case here and this turned out to be a fatal design flaw right and and uh, so here is this you know the the, the engineering company they basically uh, approved this design without doing a thorough calculation so here's what happened uh, the the installer the fabricator requested this design change the engineer verbally agreed to it uh, they changed their drawings and they stamped their approval but this approval was without a complete calculation uh, of what is going to happen to the load and whether it was going to uh, be able to take that load or not so it turned out that from the investigation this walkway collapsed at loads significantly lesser than what was specified by the building code for Kansas City and um, and so this uh, this this design did not satisfy the building code okay the one that was used and so and it was nothing to do with the materials used or the quality of the work done and basically the blame was that the engineers did not do the job properly so the consequence of this was that uh, all the responsible engineers and the firm that was involved they lost their licenses um, and uh, and of course uh, there was uh, there were lawsuits filed over three billion dollars in civil lawsuits um, compared to the cost of the building which was half a million dollars and so the engineers were convicted of gross negligence misconduct and unprofessional conduct in the practice of engineering so they never again were allowed to practice engineering so so the point is that as an engineer you have great power and so with that comes great responsibility by the way so this is a famous line from the spider-man movie uh, which as you know has some very interesting engineering uh, technologies built into it such as the spider web which has a lot of strength um, and so you know it's a it's an interesting material to to look at from uh, from the viewpoint of strength to weight ratio so anyway so point here is that the reason we want to understand you know um, you know our responsibilities is because ethics is fundamentally important to the practice of engineering okay so let's begin with this question you know what is ethics what does ethics involve right well ethics basically means uh, or involves investigation of you know what is right versus wrong what is just versus unjust what's good versus bad and virtue versus vice so these are the things that you know as an engineer you're constantly balancing out um, in the context of you know uh, solutions you might be implementing to solve uh, uh, a pollution crisis a traffic uh, you know uh, um, highway crisis or any other activity that you're involved in. these are going to be uh, part of your uh, design process part of your implementation process things like that so the reason we want ethics to be guiding our decision making is that uh, on one level it um, ensures that whatever we do um, provides greater benefits and mutual benefits to everybody right it's for the greater good it also helps us you know uh, have some uh, framework through which we know that uh, this is the right way to treat others and finally it it goes beyond the self-interest of a person right when we think about uh, the benefits to uh, the greater society or the environment it goes beyond pure self-interest so, as you know, uh, an engineer basically builds products, right? They develop processes, and so in the context of this, we just take the example of building products. Think about cell phones, home appliances, bridges, cars, um, you know, uh, biomedical devices, 
they are basically advancing society by by these new technologies yeah. and all of these new technologies you know when you start thinking about making them you want to start thinking about being uh, you know how does my manufacturing of this particular product affects society well on one hand society probably gets direct benefit of you know having a heart valve or building a bridge but what does it take to build that you know am i consuming resources that are basically very scarce am i polluting the water uh, in my uh, around my factory am i spewing a lot of greenhouse gases when i'm in from my from my factory so these are the things that uh, we have to take into account uh, as an engineer right and similarly when you develop processes for example uh, when we are creating uh, drinking water from salt water uh, or recycling bottles again these are things that have um, impact on the society in terms of uh, uh, human impact as well as environmental impact right so ethics is uh, is integral to the operation of an engineer right and not only are engineers required to be socially responsible they're also required by their own profession depending on whether you're a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer you are required to be professionally responsible to your to your engineering field as well and this comes through through uh, various obligations uh, and duties that uh, that um, you are tasked to do yeah. so just thinking about you know reiterating the idea that any product that we make has a consequence in society uh, many times uh, it's designed to have an intended consequence of benefiting society but sometimes it has um, uh, the unintended consequence that it might actually uh, produce harm to society who knew that when plastics were invented that they would be such a major cause of pollution uh, uh, to us now right so obviously there were a lot of benefits of plastic but today we are struggling to weigh the benefits of plastic with the fact that we have faced with the significant uh, challenge of uh, trying to dispose of plastics and so that happens for pretty much any engineering uh, activity there is going to be um, benefit but there are also downsides and so uh, we have to have an ethical um, uh, uh, understanding of okay is this really going are the benefits going to significantly outweigh um, the the negative impacts and what are these negative impacts and how do I mitigate them right so those are things that uh, we have to constantly think about you know um, here are things that have direct consequence right so if you build a bridge and it's not designed properly it's likely to fail if a gas tank is positioned too close to the bumper it might explode from a small accident uh, if medical instrument isn't accurate you know it's not giving the right dose it might actually cause harm uh, refining gas produces uh, too much toxins and so are these toxins being sent out into the community or are they being captured and recycled in some way so uh, so you know you should take a moment here you know spend you know five or ten minutes and just kind of think about your role as an engineer you know think about you being in an engineering organization and just start you know from day one that you enter the company uh, what is it that you think you're going to be doing besides just what you think is engineering which is you know creating new products solving problems things like that as you'll see very quickly every discussion every meeting that you have will be uh, in the framework of trying to make sure that whatever you do is ethical okay. so here are some a uh, list of some things that you know you would be thinking about safety what is acceptable risk is it compliant with the the rules of of the of the um, of the local society that you are going to be implementing this uh, uh, solution in uh, you know confidentiality environmental health uh, data integrity so these are all aspects of ethics that are going to be involved in your activities as an engineer right um, and so what this topic is about is how does one go about um, uh, managing these issues these ethical issues okay so the good news is that at the outset as we start getting trained as an engineer we are going to uh, of course look at ethics 
uh, in engineering classes but also as you become a professional engineer you will see that um, uh, the various societies that you are part of you know for example the American Society of Mechanical Engineers or the uh, the Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers IEEE or the Society for uh, Civil Engineers ASCE National Society of uh, Professional Engineers so all of these have clear engineering codes of ethics okay so that means that there is a there is a document there is a uh, there is a, a book uh, uh, that tells you what are the codes under which a mechanical engineer is going to um, uh, is going to carry out uh, her activities as part of the profession, right? And uh, and so let me kind of give you a sense of uh, how these codes arise. It begins at the highest level by some important principles. You know, these are things that many of us recognize. You know, for example, an engineer shall strive to comply with the principles of sustainable development. So in today's uh, environment, it makes a lot of sense to think about this because we want to make sure that we are uh, we are trying to reverse, if not improve, over uh, over the past generations by not making major impact environment negative impact on on the environment. Secondly, engineers will treat fairly all persons and will not engage in acts of discrimination based on race, religion, gender, disability, age etc right and this is one of the principles in the uh, in the IEEE uh, ethical code similarly ASME says that engineers shall respect the proprietary information and intellectual property rights of others that means we are not you know cheating uh, by taking ideas from others without giving due recognition right you are welcome to take the idea of another but you have to compensate that organization or the person right and not uh, not make it sound like you created the idea, and uh, and uh, and try to cheat the other person out of the fact that they were the ones who originally created uh, you know the new idea, right? And so so these are some important principles that guide all engineers. Right? And it turns out that the National Society of Professional Engineers has put together um, what is called the fundamental canons uh, for the ethical. Um, uh, for the ethical uh, uh, activities of engineers uh, and these are the following there are six of them and uh, so as an engineer uh, as part of your professional duty you should hold paramount the safety health and welfare of the public perform services only in areas of your competence that means you should be trained to be able to do what you're doing right? or you have experience with doing what you're doing Issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner. Um, act for each employer or client as a faithful agent or trustee. Avoid deceptive acts and then conduct themselves honorably, responsibly, ethically and lawfully so as to enhance the reputation of the profession. Right? So you have to, uh, you, so as you see in these six canons, you know, one of them is to really make sure that if you are a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer, or a materials engineer, you're actually uh, looking out for the profession by doing your best uh, job at it. Yeah. So, you know, so this is a starting point. You first understand the codes, and then the next step is to learn to apply them. Uh, you know, we started this lecture with three examples. Uh, in the next lecture, we will actually go back and look at, um, you know, how to uh, how to actually decipher what we should do, because. You know, knowing the codes um, is is one thing, but it is not obvious. You know how you want to implement those various aspects for a given situation, right? And the reason for that is that although we have these good set of guides to follow, um, sometimes you know the question that is posed is a really hard ethical situation, and goes beyond the codes here because it requires you to. Uh, to uh, introduce moral reasoning and a form of conflict resolution to really uh, come up with a good good response right and so that's what we'll do in the next class so today just to wrap up um, I wanted to emphasize that since you as an engineer play a very important role in society uh, ethics is fundamental to the practice of the profession 
you'll encounter numerous situations where you have access to solutions in the context of societal and environmental impact and which balance out reliability with cost and performance and so you're constantly trying to use um, uh, ethical guidelines uh, such as uh, stated by the NSP, NSPE uh, you know as ethical codes and standards for practice in your um, in your profession okay uh, so this is uh, the first part of our discussion on ethics uh, look out for the next video thank you